the new with design Swatch S300 has been available in the marketplace for a couple of weeks now. Now I've been kind of busy lately so I was just going to let this one pass me by, but then I saw it was getting some pretty negative feedback which surprised me. Nemeth have a pretty good reputation and they produce a number of aircraft for other sims, as well as the B407 for MSFS. So my curiosity was piqued and weirdly the bad reviews made me want to know what was wrong with it. As you can see it's really nicely modelled and the textures look pretty good too. Everything is clean and crisp and the gauges are fairly easy to read in VR and it supports that all-important VR zoom. Unfortunately the doors don't open, which isn't essential, but I do feel it adds a little something. And it's something that you see quite a lot from other third-party helicopter developers. But it's by no means a deal-breaker. I mean, this is a relatively inexpensive module, so naturally it's not going to have all the bells and whistles, but in general it looks pretty good. Now if I move the cycle forwards and backwards, you'll see I get some movement on the swash plate but nothing left and right. And even when I go forwards and backwards, you see it decouples from the rotors at the top. But it's not a big deal. It's not like you spend your whole flight looking up at your rotors. And on the back, yeah, the tail rotors work as you'd expect. You can see a slight movement from the rotors with the collective, but again, that's not something you're going to be able to see in flight. Okay, let's quickly run through the startup. So we're going to push the fuel cutoff in, fuel pump on, magnetos to both, battery on, mixture to full rich. Let's give a little bit of throttle and hit the starter. And there's the engine coming to life, and the blades are starting to move. The engine does kind of rev up and down as it warms up. I'm not sure if that's normal. There is a checklist. I admit, I've not read it. Let's roll in a bit more throttle and engage the governor. Once the engine gets going, it's actually got quite a nice purr. So I think in terms of startup sequence it's fairly good. It seems fairly realistic. Let's switch the alternator on. And engage the clutch. It has an auto clutch, which I think is primarily to assist with startup, but once up and running, you can just flip it to engage and close the cover. Let's get some lights on, shall we? And it looks like everything is ready to go. Okay, so I'm experimenting with recording in VR, so bear with me and let me know what you think. Now, let's see if we can get this thing up in the air. This is where it gets interesting. I'm going to really gently lift the collective. And I've just got to get ready for that moment when it tries to throw me into that hangar. And it's lifting. Okay, it's not entirely stable. Let's move away from that building. That's the ground. And that's the ground again. There's a plane. Let's get over the plane, shall we? There we go. See? Smooth as butter. But this is where the negative feedback is coming from. From what I can gather, there's some issue with the lateral trim, and at the moment, you can't adjust it. However, I did see something saying there was a patch for the version bought on the website, so hopefully it'll be coming to the marketplace soon. So, we're currently in Rio de Janeiro, and it's very pretty. I've never been there, but it looks nice here. 
I just got a friend getting married there later in the year. He didn't invite me, but I'm not taking it personally. But it would be a really long, expensive trip to attend a wedding. Look at the sun over there, disappearing over the mountains. Right, but we're here to talk about this helicopter. Now actually, once it's in flight, it's not too bad. You do need to give it some left pedal fade constantly, in order to keep the slip gauge in the right place. But in general, in flight, it's alright. But when you try to exceed the limits is when things don't quite seem to add up. So if I yank the collective up, it's meant to have a max climb rate of around 750 feet a minute. I'm doing lots more than that. And you can see my RPM has dropped out of the green. It's still in green for the rotor, but the engine is too low. Let's see if we can get the rotor out of the green as well. We're now properly out of the green, and there's no RPM warning. It's not popped up and said you're about to break your engine, or we're about to crash and die. It's just letting me do it. And I'm still climbing. But you can see, actually, now the roads are slow enough, you can see them. So that doesn't seem right to me. I'm fairly sure I should be getting a warning or, or an engine failure. Or possibly a horrible fiery death. So let's bring the collective back down again so we can get the RPM back up. It's meant a very popular helicopter, as it's relatively cheap to run, and it's used a lot for training. But with its current flight dynamics, I wouldn't want to put a new pilot in here, because they wouldn't last all of 5 seconds before they hit something. But it does look like something is going to get fixed, and when it is, I think this will be a really nice little helicopter. And even as it is, it's by no means unflyable. If you make it past takeoff, it's fine. But I wouldn't recommend it for inexperienced helicopter pilots at this time. Now, let's see what happens if we exceed the max speed. Let's see if we can get past max speed before we hit the ground, that'd be nice. So we're past the red line and still flying. We're almost at the top of the gauge. There's a little wobble, but not really any more than it normally wobbles. So normally I expect the handling to get a bit more erratic, or some kind of indication of overstressing the engine. But we're doing around 120 knots, and it's still flying fine. That's turbine engine speed in a piston engine aircraft. Obviously assisted by the descent, but I'd expect the helicopter to complain about it a bit more. Okay, let's reduce speed a bit. Now turning can be interesting. If we turn to the right, it's perfectly fine. There's a little bit of overlean, but it's easily corrected. But if I turn to the left, it very easily rolls to the side and wants to go over. So you need a little bit of right stick back in the other direction. Yep, it really wants to kill me. Oh, there we go. So, given how easily it rolled left, let's see if we can do an actual roll to the left. Here we go. Look at that, piece of cake. Nearly splattered cake, but there you go, cake nonetheless. Must stop saying cake. Again, trying to keep that slip gauge in the right place. 
I think if you have proper helicopter pedals that don't spring back, that'd be okay. But if you've got sprung pedals like most of us, it does require constant force to keep them in the right place. You could turn on tail assist if you want to, but that detracts from the realism for me. Okay, now let's try a roll to the right. And that's the ground, don't hit the ground, ground looks hard. Right, we'll gain a bit of altitude and see if we can do a loop the loop. And here we go. I'm still quite low for this, but you know, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah, crashing, dying. Yep, yeah, that's the worst that could happen. Uh, no, we're, we're fine. I mean, of course we're fine. Never doubted it. So yeah, it's got no problem with aerobatics. Again, I'm not sure how accurate that would be compared to the real thing. I think generally there's not many real world helicopters that can do those kind of aerobatics. But maybe they're quite difficult failures to model. Now let's take it back to the airport and bring it in for landing. As you slow down, it does become harder to keep it stable. Going down a little fast. I'm not sure if they've modelled VRS on this, it doesn't feel like they have. And I'm not going to try an auto rotated given I can barely land it, that's for sure. So it all looks fine at the moment, but as I get into ground effect, it's going to go all over the place. Let's see if we can't get off the taxiway. Maybe park behind one of these jets and upset the pilot. Ooh, let's park at the gate because, you know, why wouldn't you park a helicopter at a jetliner gate? Not convinced they'll connect the jetway though. I think that's actually the nicest landing I've done in this helicopter. That's a bit of an anticlimax actually, it wasn't all over the place at all. You're probably thinking, what's he talking about? It looks fine. Maybe I've just got the hang of it now. Previously it's wobbled a lot on landing, like it did during takeoff. But apparently I managed to screw up screwing up the landing. Clearly I'm a better pilot than I realised. Okay, so I'm out of VR mode now, so let's shut her down. It's getting a little dark, so it's worth noting that actually these lamps at the back work quite nicely. You can tilt them up and down and everything, it's quite nice. Right, so let's disengage the governor and roll back the throttle. Pull the mixture knob out. You'll cut off the pump. Probably could have turned that off after startup. Nito's off. Clutch off. Alternator, the lights off. And finally, the battery. So, that's about it, really. It looks like the sun is setting, and it's about to get dark. So, final thoughts. It's actually not a bad little helicopter. Seems the negative reviews are down to difficulty in takeoff and landings, but by all accounts, that's going to get fixed. 
and I think when it is, we're going to have a really nice little helicopter. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's my first time trying to record with VR, and it's a bit of a different style to my other videos, so let me know what you think in the comments. And if you made it to the end, you should probably hit that subscribe button. Until next time, fly safe.